Oh, hey YouTube, what's really good? My name is Vivid, and the WBE playoffs are back this weekend, so let's talk about that. Before we get any further in the video, there's something that I need to get out of the way, and it's something that if you don't know already, you should know, and if you do know it already, then it's probably an elephant in the room, and that is that Duncan has forfeited his playoff game to Wolf, so Wolf goes straight to the finals. And due to these circumstances, I'm not going to be talking about the Duncan versus Wolf game at all. It doesn't make sense for me to make predictions and analyze a game that's not going to happen. I'm also not going to be talking about why Duncan decided to drop from the league. I will link to his last playoff game in the description down below towards the end of that video he explains himself it's completely his story to tell so i will leave it to duncan that being said we are going deep into a drive versus cybertron aaron versus dan this is the playoff battle happening this weekend and i think that both of these teams have something special to bring to the table so let's get into that but and i'm sure you knew this was coming before we actually get into the video i have a few quick plugs the first is that if you are into among us and you are into pokemon specifically evolutions we have a shirt designed for you my wife has designed a banger t-shirt that is a crossover between among us and pokemon on with all the evolutions listed as the crewmates it will be the first link in the description down below this t-shirt is not available forever it is available for a limited time if you like it go grab it before it is gone i think the design is great i love it i think it's it's my favorite thing that we've created so far my next plug is that i've been doing pokemon streams here on youtube and they've been absolutely fantastic the support has been mind-blowing so starting this upcoming wednesday november 4th right here on this youtube channel we're going to be doing a brand new live stream series and that is going to be pokemon crystal without ever taking a single point of damage yes this is entirely inspired by small ants i watched and reacted to his video of him doing the exact same thing in pokemon platinum and i had to do a challenge like this this brand new series will be live streamed right here on this youtube channel every wednesday and saturday starting at 5 p.m pst or 8 p.m est if you don't live in either of those time zones you can just do conversions and as always start times may change due to outside circumstances this also transitions perfectly into my final plug and that is that a lot of my views right now on youtube are coming from people who are not subscribed if that is you please consider clicking that subscribe button it would mean the absolute most to me the support lately has been phenomenal let's keep it up let's keep growing let's continue this journey now let's just look at the a drive versus cybertron matchup all right so you already know i had to ask you this question between a drive and cybertron who do you actually expect to win the playoff game this week leave your answer in the comment section down below don't just leave a name give me a reason why what team do you think is set up better to win what coach do you expect better prep out of what coach do you expect better play out of just make sure your answers are constructive and not demeaning let this be a positive space for us to have conversations all right Let's actually just start breaking down the teams and start breaking down the matchup as a whole. Aaron has access to Bronzor, Decidueye, Excadrill, Gigalith, Noivern, Primarina, Sea King, Stoutland, Toxtricity, G Max, Unpheasant, and Whimsicott. Dan has access to Blastoise, G Max, Bronzong, Drapion, Hitmonchan, Ninetales, Alola, Rhyperior, Rotom Frost, Sandslash, Alola, Togekiss, Serena, and Turtonator. If we're looking at this matchup, right away i think the first thing most people will notice is that aaron and dan both have access to weather modes i do believe that aaron's weather mode is a fair bit stronger than dan's just because aaron's weather abuser excadrill is far and away the better pokemon between excadrill and sand slash that being said i think they're both going to bring weather components i don't even necessarily think that aaron has to bring gigalith i think he'll bring it but the fact that excadrill can set up its own sand means that gigalith isn't super necessary i do expect both of them to come though um, looking at Dan's weather core here, I really don't think Sand Slash makes the cut. It doesn't do a ton. It's not good against Primarina. It's not good against, it's not particularly good against Exodrill. It's okay, I guess. It's not fantastic against Gigalith. It's fine, I guess, against Toxtricity. Like, I think it, it Oko's it with a ground stab. It's good against Whimsicott here, but all in all, I don't think it's actually going to put on enough pressure for Dan to actually justify the bring here. I do think Dan brings Ninetales. He's shown that he likes Ninetales a lot. Setting up a Roarvel could be be very big game for him uh, I think that Dan's biggest strength in this matchup aside from just having a weather piece so that he can actually play around Aaron's weather is that Dan has a pretty reasonable trick room mode here if we're looking at Aaron's team he has really good speed control he has really good threats across the board Dan has way better trick room pieces. The only thing that is on Aaron's team that is really fantastic inside trick room is Gigalith. He has Bronzor, but Bronzor is essentially, I don't know, it's not a real Pokemon. I mean, he could bring it and he could use it as sort of a tech piece. He brought it against me because I had a trick room component, so I wouldn't put it past him. I just don't think it ever does much. Whereas A-Drive, I, I keep bouncing back between saying Dan and A-Drive or Aaron and Cybertron. You'll have to forgive me for that. 
spots. Um, but I, I, on A Drive's team, Rhyperior looks very strong. It looks like a very threatening, like Maximon. It looks really good inside Trick Room. He has Bronzong, which again, while not overly offensive, it is much better than Bronzor in this matchup. And then he also has access to Turtonator, which don't get me wrong, I never respected Turtonator before now, but Dan has really put a lot of respect on Turtonator's name this season. This matchup is a complex one, and it's one I think we need to look at a little bit more in depth. So right now, what you're seeing is just a screen with both of the teams. We're actually going to cut to a screen that shows the in-depth statistics for their usage stats for the season. I want to do this matchup justice and give it a proper deep dive since the winner of this match actually goes on to finals. So after I give my thoughts, predictions, and opinions, we're going to be listening to a clip from Adi. I've talked about him a lot throughout my season. He's in my front office. He's helped me out a ton this season. Super smart guy. I highly value his opinion. He recorded his clip saying what his predictions are. I haven't listened to it yet because I didn't want that to skew my own perception of the matchup. Let's just get into these stats. Okay, so the screen you're seeing right now is the matchup presented to you on the Draft League website. If you haven't seen this website, it's fantastic. It'll be linked in the description down below. It's the best way to keep up with coaches throughout the season. But this screen shows the base speed stat of every Pokemon. It shows their usage stats throughout the season and sort of like their kill to death ratio. I think that this is going to come into play. So this is why I wanted to show you specifically this screen. If you look at these, like if you look at the difference between these teams, I think the biggest differentiator here is that Dan has brought every single one of his Pokemon at least once every single Pokemon has hit the field he has shown that he is willing to make a game plan around every single Pokemon on his team maybe not make an entire game plan around them but piece them into a game plan somehow whereas if you look at Aaron he hasn't brought bronze or even once I mean he brought it against me but it never hit the field he hasn't brought sea king once he hasn't brought Stoutland once he's only brought unpheasant three times and he's only brought decidui three times Aaron has brought Excadrill Gigalith Primarina, Toxtricity, and Unpheasant to the overwhelming majority of his games. That's five Pokemon. So one, two, three, four, five, right? Excadrill, Gigalith, Primarina, Tox, and Whimsicott. His flex slots here are presumably Decidueye and Noivern. He's shown a massive preference towards Noivern. I know that Aaron is a fantastic VGC player, a draft league format is an entirely different beast. I know Aaron is also a fantastic draft league player. See, this is where the matchup skews in Dan's favor to me. Outside of just, I think Dan has a better trick room matchup. I think Dan is much better at coming up with sort of wild sets. This is noted in his last playoff game. If you watched it, it was insane. He brought Adrenaline or Blastoise. He brought Choice Scarf Charm Serena. Dan is not afraid to play wild sets that he think will give him an advantage. All of that being said, I don't think you can ever really fully vote against Aaron in a VGC format. Yes, his draft is very top heavy, and yes, he has brought the same Pokemon multiple times throughout the majority of his season, but he's also dominated the majority of his season. Every single opponent Aaron has played probably past week four has known that he is going to bring probably the same five Pokemon and every single opponent except for versus lost to him. I think that says a lot about his game plan. I think that says a lot about his play style. I think that says a lot about his consistency. And honestly, if we're just looking at this matchup in a vacuum, I do think that Aaron has the stronger team. I also think that Aaron's flex slots could play a big role this week. Like if you look at Decidueye, I think it has an overwhelmingly positive matchup against Dan's team, or at least the component of Dan's team that I think Aaron's team is weak against. Like if we are saying that Aaron's team is weak against Dan's Trick Room components, Decidueye looks like a good check to Bronzong. It looks like a good check to Rhyperior. It's maybe not fantastic against Turtonator, but it's also not horrible here against most of the team. Now Pokemon and Dan's team that I haven't mentioned that I think could be a massive role player this week is Blastoise. If you look at its matchup, Blastoise gets most of the way there with just water and ice coverage. Like it hits, I think, everything on Aaron's team for super effective damage barring the Primarina. I'm not counting the Sea King and the Stoutland and I don't think A-Drive will either. I think you can essentially erase these from Aaron's team this week. I don't think he's bringing them in the playoffs and I think Dan knows that and I, again I think that is a big part of Dan's sort of advantage this week. The big issue with Blastoise is how do you put it in position to do the maximum amount of damage? Aaron has such good speed control and Blastoise is at this really awkward speed tier where it's not outspeeding 
his big threats if it gets up a shell smash and it's not under speeding the things that it needs to under speed like Primarina if it's in Trick Room. I think that's going to be the key here. I think that Dan getting Blastoise to work or Dan getting Trick Room up with a game plan around that is going to be how he actually takes this match off Aaron. From Aaron's side, it looks pretty straightforward. I've mentioned this, but Excadrill looks like a nightmare for Dan to play against. I think that the rest of his team is just very strong. Primarina also looks to have an overwhelmingly positive matchup. He could even get Trixie and maybe play with like an Iron Ball Primarina to have a massive threat inside Trick Room because Primarina looks really good against all of Dan's Trick Room threats. So I, I don't know. This matchup, I think, is going to come down a lot to prep, which is a thing you can say about every matchup every week. But this matchup specifically, because we have one of the best VGC players in the world versus what I would argue is one of the best draft league players in the world, like one of the people that has the most draft league reps under his belt. I think this matchup is going to be insane. It's one I look forward to watching. If I had to predict exactly what teams were coming, I would say for Aaron's side, Decidueye, Excadrill, Gigalith, Primarina, Tox, and Whimsicott. I think you could slot out the Tox for Noivern here. For Dan's side, it's much harder to predict. I do think he brings the Blastoise. I also think he brings the Ninetales. The Blastoise because it looks like it has a good matchup. The Ninetales because I think he needs his own weather component. Outside of that, I could see things like Rotom Frost coming. I, I, I think that Blizzard Spam looks fine this week. Also, Blizzard Spam plus Freeze Dry is good coverage against Aaron's entire team. I think the Togekiss comes just because it's one of Dan's better utility pieces. It's played most of the weeks. I think that that Rhyperior plus Bronzong looks solid. If I had to nail down a six, if I had to nail down a six, I would say Blastoise comes, Bronzong comes. I would say Ninetales comes. I would say Rhyperior comes. Outside of that, I think I would say Togekiss. And I really believe that Dan is probably going to bring Sandslash Alola. I don't think it's fantastic, but I think he's probably going to feel like he needs to have one, a weather component, and two, also a Trick Room component. If he doesn't bring the Sandslash, I could see him bringing the Turtonator. Also, somehow I missed this during the recording, but I caught it while editing. It's also pretty plausible that Dan brings Serena here. It looks really good against Aaron's weather core, and also it stops prankster shenanigans from Whimsicott. So Serena looks like a really strong piece. I just wanted to add that in. Okay, so now that we've kind of poured through the data and looked at the teams, I'm going to make a prediction here. Last time I made predictions, I hit it 50-50. I got Wolf's matchup wrong. I really thought K was going to win. I also got Dan's matchup wrong. I really thought Versus was going to win. The other two I got right, so I'm, I'm scoring a 50. The audience in Twitter polls scored roughly 100% because they were all overwhelmingly the correct answers. This matchup is, I think, much closer to a 50-50 than any matchup so far. I am leaning slightly towards Dan. I really think that Dan is hungry. I think he wants to win. I think he's going to come with insane prep. And I think he's probably working his brain overtime right now, trying to figure out what sets he can bring to sort of trump Aaron's game plan. Again, I think this is close to a 50-50. I just think that Dan's draft league experience is going to come into play here. I know Aaron also has a ton of draft league experience. I just think his play style, his play patterns have been more predictable than any other coach this season. It's worked for him. He's very consistent. He's very good. I just really think that Dan is going to exploit that this week. That's my gut feeling. That's what I'm going with. Now, let's listen to what Adi has to say. Let's see if we line up in our thoughts and opinions. Uh, Adi, take it away. Hey everyone, my name's Adi and Vivid's invited me to comment on this upcoming semifinals match. This game is likely going to be close in my opinion. My first thoughts when I look at the matchup are that Dan's hail mode doesn't look great this week against Aaron's sand mode. Not only is Aaron's giggle with a bulkier weather setter, but Excadrill alone has a pretty easy time against Dan's Hail core, that being Ninetales, Sandslash, and Rotom. It's also worth mentioning that Excadrill can use Max Rockfall to set its own sand. That means it can easily be brought and function without Gigalith in tow. That being said, Dan definitely has a decent counterplay to sand, and I expect him to bring it. At first, it seems like Blastoise threatens that sand core, and while I expect Dan to bring them on, I still don't think it's his best sand answer. First off, Excadrill can boost up its special defense with Max Quake, which enables it to perhaps take a few super effective hits. And if Blastoise tries to set up, say, a Shell Smash, it's not easy, because in the face of Aaron's offensive pressure, Blastoise struggles to set up it even at plus 2 speed, it can't outspeed Excadrill and Sand. It also can't set Rain with its water attacks, which is arguably a weakness in this matchup. I think Dan's real strength here is his Trick Room mode. Aaron doesn't have fantastic counterplay to Trick Room, and at first glance, a weakness policy Rhyperior looks like it has potential to sweep. Thing is, Aaron has to realize his team's weakness to Trick Room, and I'm confident he'll prepare for it. 
we can take a look at his potential counterplay. Aaron has Primarina, and a defensive Primarina could arguably be a Rhyperior counter. That being said, Rhyperior can take advantage of Aaron's Sand and get a special defense boost, and can further boost its special defense with Max Quake, and Primarina's defense isn't fantastic. In the right position, Rhyperior can 100% sweep. Another option to consider is Gigalith. At first glance, Gigalith seems decent. It underspeeds Rhyperior in Trick Room and has excellent physical defense, meaning it can take a hit. And then again, when you think about it, the most common way for Bronson to proc Rhyperior's weakness policy is Bulldoze, which would also hit Gigalith. And I say this in all seriousness, he could definitely bring Bronzor. In the final week of the WBE, Aaron brought Bronzor against the South Texas Sableyes as a Trick Room counter. There are only two mons that were in Trick Room on his team, Bronzor and Whimsicott, so I'm definitely not ruling anything out. I guess my final thoughts are this. A Drive's strength here is his prep. I've said this about Aaron's draft before. It is probably top heavy, and his sets throughout the season have been pretty predictable. But that really just underlines the strength of his top mons and his play, despite that fact he dominated the main season. On the other hand, we've seen that A Drive can really bring the prep. I think his quarterfinal match highlighted that. I think that out of Trick Room, A Drive is forced to play reactively, and Aaron has all the momentum. I think Dan really relies on Trick Room to take the set. And if he can, number one, anticipate Aaron's counterplay, and number two, come up with a consistent way to set Trick Room, and consistency is important in a best of three, I think he can pretty easily take the set. Keeping all of this in mind, I'm going to go with a bet for Aaron taking the set with a 60% confidence rate. This match is going to be close, and I'm looking forward to watching it. One, I would just like to say, can we please get a pog for Adi in the comments? This is very eloquently spoken. He did not have to go out of his way to record this for me, but he did. And I think his thoughts and opinions are very valuable here. We see eye to eye on a lot of things, but Adi actually has Aaron winning, and I totally see that. I get it. The consistency is worth a lot. I think Aaron's experience is worth a lot. Yeah, I just think this matchup is really hard to predict. I think it's going to be insane. I think it's going to be an incredibly fun one to watch. I think it is going to come down to the wire. I do predict this matchup to be a 2-1 like no matter who wins and who loses I do not expect this to be a 2-0 sweep I think that both of these coaches have a lot of experience I think they both have really strong points to their teams I think they both have really strong points to their skill sets I'm hyped. So let me know if you're hyped in the comment section down below. Let me know your predictions in the comment section down below. So this is the prediction video for playoff round two. Once again, we will be back with a post playoff recap. Look forward to that. I'm incredibly excited to be going into the finals of WBE. I'm incredibly excited for what's going to happen. Are we going to get the fabled Aaron versus Wolfie finals? People have been talking about that since I think the beginning of the season. Everybody has just said Aaron versus Wolfie finals. Are we getting that? Or is Dan going to be the massive upset here that I think he is? Are we getting a Dan Wolfie finals? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support on these videos. I'm having a lot of fun recording them. Also, please remember the plugs at the beginning of the video. The Among Us t-shirts are going to be live. I am streaming here on YouTube. Those streams are dope, so please subscribe. Turn on notifications. Do all of that fun business. You can also follow me on Twitter. We're trying to revive my Discord server. Lots of cool stuff coming. Lots of cool Pokemon content. Thank you so much for all the support. My name is Vivid. I'm kind of done here and I have to leave. Okay, bye. Oh, you made it to the end of the video. That's dope. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you would like to see more from me and make it to the end of those videos, there will be a video here and a video here. This one is a video that I think is really good and this is what YouTube recommends. So you should watch one of them. Okay, thanks.